we have Coach uh, Mario Cristobal from University of Oregon on the on the line. Uh, they just had a great season uh, with a second consecutive Pac-12 championship uh, with that win over USC on Friday night. Uh, Oregon had a four and two record this year. Um, what's notable is their two losses came by only a combined seven points for the Ducks. Um, they've been here twice. The last trip was in 2013, a win over Kansas State. And their initial trip here, Joey Harrington was the quarterback that year in 2002 with a win over Colorado. Um, as we mentioned earlier, uh, led by an Arizona quarterback from Chandler Hamilton High School, Tyler Shuck is, uh, is Oregon's starting quarterback. Uh, and with that, we'll say congratulations to Coach. Uh, another step is you build the Ducks back up to uh, where they were uh, uh, some years back. Uh, we'll just give you some opening remarks, and then we'll, uh, we'll open up for questions. So hold on one second, Coach. We have you, unfortunately, it's on mute, so we'll get you unmuted. Apologies for that. Oh, you're good to go. Okay. All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Certainly a tremendous honor to be here to represent our conference in the Fiesta Bowl. Um, proud of our guys after a really hard fought game on Friday night. Um, the ability to, uh, to go out and earn a, a Pac-12 conference title for the second consecutive year is something that we don't take for granted. Um, and certainly um, with so much uh, excitement building around the program and to be able to play in uh, such a, a bowl game, this opportunity means the world to us. So our guys are extremely fired up. Preparations will begin tomorrow. We give them the weekend off to get their legs back underneath them and rest up a little bit. And uh, extremely, extremely excited and fired up about the opportunity. Now I was muted. Uh, thank you very much, Coach. We have a bunch of questions for you here. We're gonna start with James Krapia from the Oregonian, please. Mario, just uh, the quarterbacks clearly have a history against each other at the high school level. Uh, can you take us back to the recruitment of Tyler and, and how much familiarity do you have with Brock Purdy uh, as those two obviously went at each other a couple of times in their high school careers? Well, certainly a competitive situation at the high school level and now I'm going to have the opportunity to do it at the uh, collegiate level as well. So I know there'll be a lot of noise surrounding that, a lot of attention, uh, which makes it, again, add to the excitement of the game. But by first and foremost, it's important to note that we're playing uh, an excellent football team with a strong culture and tremendous leadership, and we have a ton of respect for them. So certainly I know that'll be a subplot, but uh, the focus will be on the, uh, the game and the opponent at hand. Great. Next up, we'll go to Pranav. I'm not going to try and mispronunciate that last name, so we'll go to Pranav. Uh, Coach Cristobal, first of all, congratulations on making another BCS Bowl. But how do you look to mentally and physically prepare the team for the game? Uh, just because, you know, it's COVID and a lot of restrictions are around that. We'll take the same approach we have all year. I mean, back in March when everything was shut down to the pandemic, the first and probably the most, I would say, prominent statement that we made as an organization was that whoever handles this pandemic best We'll probably have an opportunity to hold up uh, the trophy at the end of the year in terms of the conference and maybe more. So we took that approach and our guys have done an excellent job. Our medical staff has done an excellent job being regimented and holding each other to a very high standard to be able not only to stay healthy, which is the number one priority, but also to make sure that week in and week out, we could field an entire or close to an entire football team. So that approach will not change. And quite honestly, if we weren't playing a football game and if they weren't here, we would expect our players to uphold the exact same protocol to keep themselves and their family safe. Thank you. Next question will go to Tyson Alger from The Athletic and then Jose Romero from the Arizona Republic. Mario, most years, if you're in this situation and you're going into a New Year's Six game, you've had 12, 13 games under your belt. You guys have six. Iowa State has 11. Just how much of a feel do you have for your roster compared to what wouldn't be a normal year? Well, it changed a little bit week to week just because of the guys that you get back due to an injury or delay or whatever it may be. So uh, what kind of a feel? I think we have a pretty good feel. We see the areas that we are improving in, the areas we need to continue to improve in. And what we're seeing is a lot of guys are taking on different roles that they probably never expected to be in when the season started. We mentioned the other night how 
Kale Millen unselfishly jumped in on kickoff and kickoff return, and guys like Brian Addison jumped over on defense, and and so did J.R. Waters. I know he wasn't available the other night, but over the past couple of weeks he has. So uh, I think things like that, you know, come to mind, and it's a year of adaptability. And I think the life lessons learned with everything that we've had to, uh, I don't want to say endure, but what we've been challenged with and the fact that we've taken that don't give in attitude has helped our guys in a lot of different ways, mentally, psychologically, and in preparation not only for football games, but for the big, for the bigger picture, for life in general. So it's really proud of our guys and quite honestly would expect nothing less. Thank you. Jose Romero from the... Arizona Central and the Arizona Republic. Hey Mario, um, so you have uh, you have Tyler, you have Johnny Johnson, you've got some recruits from this area down here. And how much does can you put into words kind of how much this game kind of strengthens your foothold in recruiting in this state? Well, I think it's great to have an appearance there. I think you strengthen your foothold by what you do year in and year out as a program, you know, as opposed to tweeting or making edits about what you are gonna do. I, I think it's important to actually do um, what you uh, proclaim to do. And I think our program year in and year out over the last couple of years has really just continued to advance. And the trajectory is excellent. You know, we're going nothing but up. And I think it's important because we think the high school football in the state of Arizona is off the charts. They have great players, elite talent. They have elite coaching, top programs to compete at the national level. So I think the, the opportunity to have an appearance there, especially for some of our guys that are from the state in front of their friends and family is, is huge. It's, it's a tremendous opportunity. So, uh, but we, uh, you know, we wanna continue to, to recruit that area hard. It means a lot to us. It's extremely important to us and it will make up a, a good percentage of our roster going forward. Thank you, coach. Next up, we have Kevin Wade from 247 Sports. Hey, Coach, um, this is your second time being on opposite sidelines for Matt Campbell. What do you know about him? Uh, and then also it's 10 years anniversary of your first bowl game when he was on the other sidelines. What do you remember about that game? Oh, that was that was a classic. I remember it was the first uh, bowl game um, in the history of, of FIU, Little Caesars Bowl, hot and ready. Is that what I remember? That was a chance going on all the time, man. I ate more pizza. I, I felt like a Ninja Turtle by the end of the week. But it was a, a very competitive game that uh, – I mean, they were, we had so much respect for them. They were so explosive on offense. I mean, they were, they were lighting it up and it came down to, uh, I think a fourth and 17 that we had to convert. I don't remember specifically, right? Fourth and 17 hook and ladder and, and a field plus time right out. Um, but when you fast forward and you look at coach Campbell and his career, there's a thing, a bunch of things that really stand out. And um, the deeper dive you take into it, the more respect you have for the level of culture and the standards that they are upheld to uh, with their program and just the constant commitment to physicality, execution, a lot of the principles that we implement in our program as well. I remember a lot from back then, certainly have watched as much as I can uh, up until now, up until this press conference. So just a tremendous amount of respect for what they are, what they represent and looking forward to a tremendous challenge. Great, next up we'll go with Ryan Thornburn from the Register Guard. Hey, Mario, you uh, mentioned the other night that you guys were slightly above the threshold in the Pac-12 championship game. You have a couple weeks here, but do you have a sense for if you'll be able to have CJ and some other guys back for this game? Hopefully. I and mean, we were about to put in Joe Salovea the other night and put a helmet on him and some pads and throw him in there if, if things got any, you know, shrunk a little bit more on the roster. But um, we'll see. You know, I, I feel very hopeful that we'll have more guys back. Um, and at the end of the day, remember the year of adaptability requires that there is no given in and whatever we have to show up with, we will show up with and our guys will be extremely fired up for that. I mean, you look at some of the opportunities that guys have gotten, um, look at Sean Dollars the other night, right? I mean, you've got to be extremely excited about a guy like that and what he showed in the opportunities he got. So hopefully we'll have uh, good news as the week goes on. Thank you. Let's go to Warren Williamson. Next, please. Hey, Mario, I'm curious. Some coaches across the country have said that they will allow their players to go home for Christmas, but have video communication with families to school them on how to keep safe. I'm just wondering, uh, 
if you'll keep your guys in a bubble or allow them to go home for Christmas? Well, we think it's going to be hard to do that, um, but I'm going to meet with them first and provide information to them as opposed to them finding out, you know, via a press conference. Um, so I apologize about not having that information for you, but there's a lot to consider, especially the fact that uh, the numbers where we live and where a lot of our players reside are through the roof. And uh, our number one priority is to keep them safe. And the fact that we have had minimal situations on our in our program as compared to other programs that may have had you know, where it may have run through their program already. So they're already in that safe zone and they can do that. I think a lot of those factors have to be weighed in. So, but uh, I think it'll be very difficult to let them go home. We have created, you know, a lot like coach Campbell had mentioned about our own bubble and we've kept everybody safe. So uh, I think uh, with the opportunity that is right before us in the Fiesta Bowl against a top 10 team, one of the best teams in the country, um, it's well worth the 13 and 14 days that have to be, I don't consider it sacrifice that have to be taken advantage of to certainly be at our very best, you know, come game time. Thanks coach. Thanks coach. We have a few more, a lot of demand here, if that's okay. We have Matt from 247 sports, Matt, you're up. Yeah, Mario, big picture wise, looking at the, the opportunity at hand two years in a row, your conference champions, um, you've done it primarily different rosters with this team being much younger than last year, I guess just, the significance for this program to have this opportunity because this game can be a launching point for next year. And I guess, what do you attribute the success, you know, of two different teams and same championship product? Yeah, well, you know, certainly two different teams. We, uh, we graduate a lot of guys and then, you know, those, those opt outs in the balance when, when the season hung in the balance, not knowing when it's, if there was going to be a season or not, uh, it just, it's almost like a complete roster turnover. And, uh, we had some freshmen that we signed that we expected to come in and play right away. And they unfortunately got, got nicked up, banged up during camp, um, never had the off season with them. So to be able to endure all that stuff and still come on the end with a, with a PAC 12 title, um, it speaks loudly. Um, and at the same time, a lot of lessons learned along the way, I think will provide a tremendous boost uh, in the teaching moments for our program to continue on that upward trajectory. Cause there, there's no, uh, signs of anyone being content will never ever let that happen and the fact that we get to play an opponent of this caliber um, I mean I, our guys are, are are very well aware of who we're playing and how good they are so uh, they see the challenge they see the opportunity um, we're throwing a lot of young guys out there and they're having success a lot of true freshmen a lot of true sophomores a lot of redshirt freshmen um, and there's no substitute for the repetition or for experience and we're allowing that to run its course at whatever expense it may be. There might be some consequences. There might be some mistakes and some, some plays you'd like to have back, but it doesn't matter. Our team needs that. You know, we, I don't know the number of starts or starters that we had a year ago that weren't here this year. We have to somehow in a scrunched up season make up for all that time loss and continue just to give our guys the most uh, experience that they can possibly get. Okay, we just have uh, two more coach, if that's okay with you. We'll start with, we we'll go back to Tyson from uh, The Athletic. Mario, you, you mentioned earlier about the, the opportunity of representing the Pac-12. This is going to be a bowl season that is very minimal in, in terms of the Pac-12's uh, overall representation with a lot of the opt-outs and stuff. Just what does that, what does, what does that mean for you uh, representing the Pac-12, especially this bowl year? Well, I, I think first and foremost, always honored to be part of the conference. Um, but I guess even first and foremost before that is to be a member of this organization, the University of Oregon, and everything it represents. So um, it's important. It's, it's so important when you have an opportunity like this to honor it, um, show gratitude for it. And your best way to show gratitude is by the way you play the game, by the way you show up and, and how you perform and execute and what type of effort you display on each and every play. So um, that's always going to be the intent. So it, it means, it means the world to us. It really, really does. So again, tremendous honor and looking forward to it. Coach, we'll just wrap up with, uh, go back to James Grapia from the Oregonian. Mario, how much did you have a chance to watch the big 12 championship yesterday and see these guys in their game yesterday? And also with their two schemes offensively, this could kind of be like the all tight end bowl between you two teams. 
offensively, they've run a lot of tight ends and defensively the three, three, five, just how familiar are you with them schematically at first impression? Well, it's certainly very different than a lot of the stuff that we have faced. Um, but I've had, you know, I'm kind of a, a film junkie and spent a lot of time watching film, um, especially on Sundays when even during the season when all the different films from across the country come on. And so uh, just it's it's very different, out very well coached, very physical, explosive players at the skill positions, very powerful players in the trenches. Uh, very physical players at the second level at the linebacker position, guys that, that'll hunt you down, that uh, have a nose for the football, that are instinctive, that really understand their fits. You know, you always want to see how, you know, each side of the ball moves, you know, how are they technically and fundamentally and what type of toughness do they play with and everything. I mean, they, they hit on all check marks. They, uh, they're an excellent, talented, well-coached football team that, that runs a couple of, uh, that, that schematically have a, have more than a couple of things that are very different than what we've seen. So we certainly have a lot of preparation to get to. Fantastic. I want to thank you, Coach Cristobal, for your time this afternoon. Congratulations on the PlayStation Fiesta Bowl birth and the regular season that you had. And likewise, we can't wait to see you here on New Year's Eve in Arizona and then kick off the game on sun Saturday, January 2nd at 2 o'clock. Thank you for your time. And we appreciate it. Yeah, well, I appreciate We all appreciate you coming from everybody in our organization. Certainly wish everybody happy holidays and to remain safe and see you out there in uh, a few days. Great. Thank you.